I am so excited. We're going to be doing a series just about how good God has been. He's always good, but specifically how he's been good to people at Family Church, how he's called us and caused us to grow over the years, and we just want to celebrate the goodness of God. And one of the ways we celebrate the goodness of God is with the story of Jordan Nee. And you may know him as one of our primary worship leaders and the worship leader here at Sutherland Campus. But that's not the way the story always was. So why don't we go back and say, when did you first show up at Family Church? How old were you? And kind of what was Jordan like at that time? Uh, I think the first time I walked in the door, I was probably 17. And uh, I was invited by a friend. It was in probably 97, still a senior in high school. And I was literally just coming because a friend invited me. I was like, I just kind of thought, why not? I'll just go hang out with a friend at church. So what was your church experience like before you came here and how did that make, like what you experienced here at Family Church? How did that feel? Well, uh, it's funny how you build up expectations in your mind because my only experience with church before then was going to a small church with my grandparents. Um, both sets of my grandparents went to the same church and I would, I would go there just once in a while and it was very much a church for my grandparents. Full of traditions, like. kind Full of old tradition, fashioned. Very old fashioned. Um, and I would enjoy the time I spend with my grandparents, but it didn't feel like a church that was for me. Hmm. Um, but then I came here and my expectations were something similar and they were just totally different. Hmm. Um, it, it felt, <clears throat> even though, you know, at that time family churches did not grow like it is now or, or I had gotten to where it was, but it felt so much bigger and it felt like a church that actually not just cared about young people that actually did things for young people. Mm, mm. Um, I came in as a 17 year old going like, this is a pretty cool place to be. Mm. Not just because my friends are here, but because it's just a cool place to be. So who were your spiritual friends and how did they impact your life? Yeah. Well, my, my, one of my closest friends was Hugh Heinrichsen, who we were in high school together. We um, sang in the choirs together and, and he was the worship leader here. He was 18 at the time, and he was the yeah, worship leader here. I remember. Uh, he was not. He became a pastor here later, but at that time, he was just the worship leader. So he invited me, and then I, when I came, I saw another one of my friends that I played basketball with, which was Ransom, and um, it, it was just a cool experience to see my friends here. Uh, so I came here because of Hugh, and really the reason I kept coming was really just because I started developing this friendship. So Ransom and I were, were close, but then when I, when I came here, we really became much closer. We had a deeper level of connection because of just going to church together. So, so how did that lead to a salvation decision for you? How did that work? Well, I would say I kept, I kept coming to church just because of the friendships. I didn't come because, you know, like, oh, I just got to go here and hear some music or I got to go and hear a sermon, but I still did hear the music and still hear the sermons. And, you know, the, the truth has a way of getting in there. And so probably 98, um, after a while, I, I just, I kind of dawned on me that I believe it now. Mm. You know what mm. I mean? <clears throat> like, I don't have one of those like, oh, it was this specific date at this specific time that I gave my mm. life to the Lord. I think it was about a year of me coming sporadically with my friends and then going off to college and then missing it and wanting to come back and then realizing, no, I believe this, this is, this is the truth. Um, so I gave my life. I, I hesitate to say that. I didn't think I gave my life to the Lord, but I did trust him to be my savior. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about that. How, how did your spiritual growth proceed from that point? I was still very much in love with the kingdom of Jordan. I knew that God had his kingdom. And at that time, I, as a Christian and in my spiritual maturity, I was definitely a student. <clears throat> um, I would say that God's kingdom was over my kingdom. You know, like God has his kingdom and it is sovereign over everything. And I have what I do. And I wouldn't put words to it now, but then <clears throat> like I can now, but I was very much in love with my kingdom um, because I got to be in charge. <laughs> it was all about me. <clears throat> and really what it came down to is I, I, I didn't know it at the time, but I was wanting, I was wanting to be my own God. Yeah. So you're a mm. Duke or an Earl still. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And God's over that, but you really are still mm -hmm. invested in your kingdom. You mm -hmm. were part of a band at that time too. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So shortly after coming to the Lord, you know, some friends and I that were musicians, we decided to start a band and we, and I would have thought at the time that it was a ministry that I was doing this, this band, but we, we did the band for probably six, seven years, Yeah. but 
honestly, and I thought it was ministry, but honestly, it wasn't. Not for me. For me, it was, uh, I got to play guitar and hang out with my friends and make fun music. I mean, it was still a good thing. Yeah, you know, good, it was, clean, fun. It was good, clean, fun with good, clean guys doing good things. But really, it was, I was not, my sole focus was not to further the kingdom of God. It was yeah. still to further the kingdom of Jordan. So, and that band was called? Oh, we, we called ourselves Last Adam, which comes from 1 Corinthians 15. All right. Yeah. So, a lot of good things that are going on. You're a student, you're, if you've got Christian friends, you're involved in, yeah. in some good things like the band. What helped you move to a, another step of spiritual growth? How do you feel like that happened? Uh, really, well, it's, it's funny to see these moments of growth that happen. Right. You know, you, you have this moment where this big growth, into, and then you just kind of, you either keep steadily growing or you, or you decline. You know, I, I would see times where I declined. I would see times where I steadily grow. But then you have these moments of growth. And I think a big moment of growth with me, I was kind of in some moral stuff that, that, that God really helped me get out of with through friendships and, and great conversations. And after that point, I just saw myself wanting to grow. Mm. Um, I got to this point where I, I, I was working at a bank and I quit the job and I wanted to go, I went back to school to work on my master's degree. And at that time, I just, I wanted to grow. Mm. Um, this was probably about 2008. So I'd probably been a believer now for about 10 years with very little growth. At least, at least that I, that I see it now, it was very little growth. And, but I wanted to grow, and that's when I reached out and started meeting with Ed. And then the uptick just, uh, it was a real big uptick moment for me in spiritual growth. So this is Pastor Ed that was meeting with him individually. Yeah. And, uh, and what were some of the key concepts that changed for you? Well, the biggest thing that he, that he helped me understand was, uh, was grace. Hmm. That, that, the impact of grace. Because I wanted to grow. I really did. And... And I was trying to will it to happen. Yeah. Yeah. I was trying to, to, you know, strap up my bootstraps and work harder and grow and become a better person and become a better Christian. And honestly, it was, it was starting to get exhausting. Hmm. And talking with Ed, uh, he helped me understand his story of doing the same thing and how when he got a clear picture of grace, that changed everything. And when he helped me to, to get that, not just get it intellectually, but really let it sink down to my heart. Uh, it changed me. It changed my identity as a, as a person. And that, I think that is probably the moment, if you could stay a moment, because we met for two years, but if you could stay a moment of when I went from a believer to a follower. Mm. That's when I, I went from just Jesus is my Savior, now Jesus is my Lord. Mm. And probably in our way of looking at discipleship, we'd say you moved into being the serving, because you were already serving before that, and yeah. you were doing some worship leading, I think. But there's, yeah, there's a funny thing. I started leading worship <clears throat> uh, early on. In 2005, I was actually, started to actually be a leader in the worship team, not just a musician and singer. Um, but it wasn't until then that my serving became less about myself mm. and more about others. Mm. So even though you can serve when you're a student, when the motivation changes, when your heart changes, then, then that's when it moves to servant level. Makes all the difference, doesn't it? It really does. Yeah, and just to be clear, this is uh, Pastor Ed, who's our lead pastor, and he's also Jordan's now father-in-law. <laughs> yep. But Melissa didn't come into the picture until a little later. No, she was still in Virginia. She was in school. Um, I knew who she was, but I didn't really know her very well at that time. Um, so Ed and I developed a, a close relationship with him, mentoring me for a couple of years. And then um, in 2010, when when we were doing the young adult group and Melissa started attending that after she graduated and came back home, uh, I started spending time with her and just, it, it really makes sense because the, one of the things I was most attracted to her was just how spiritually mature she was, yeah. uh, how grounded she was. And, um, and honestly, she was also really fun <laughs> and beautiful and beautiful. <laughs> okay. So I, I like your picture of how we kind of take yeah. like maybe growth jumps and then kind of maybe grow into that. Mm -hmm. So when did you start really becoming a worship leader and how does that changed in your experience of, of in the years that you've led worship? You know, 2005, 2006, I, I started leading worship and um, I loved, I love leading worship. And, <clears throat> but at that time, you know, until some, some growth came, it was more about me, uh, more about music. Um, I, was a, I was a song leader and I would get glimpses of leading worship 
Mm. The Holy Spirit would reveal to me like that weekend was really something different. Mm. And I think that that looking back on it now, I think he was he was showing me what my true passion is in my heart. Um, and it was about that same time that, you know, the band kind of fizzled out, um, mainly because guys just kind of went and did their things. People mm-hmm. were growing up and we were getting married and having kids, but also just because our hearts were moving in different directions. And my heart was moving more towards leading people to worship. And when Ed helped me understand grace, it, it opened up a whole new idea of what worship really is. And that became a new thing. And then now looking back on it, um, I don't even want to necessarily be the worship leader anymore. My heart now is um, I would be happy to be the guitar player on the stage or, or, or the, you know, playing electric guitar so that someone else could be the worship leader. Mm. And I would do, you know, my years of experience, I could pour into that person. I still want to be part of it because I love it. You know, God has definitely still put it in my heart to make music and make noise and, and lead people to worship. But I, I want to do it not from the center stage. I would prefer to do it from the back row. Mm. Which is a huge transition from where you were to start with. It is. It's, it's less about the kingdom of Jordan and more about the kingdom of God. Which in the way that we describe the discipleship pathway, we often call that a steward. Somebody who's now really intent on making somebody else the hero instead of trying to be the hero myself. Mm. Well, thank you for sharing your story. We love your, what God is doing in you. And I, I love the statement you made earlier which is you have to be a worshiper before you can lead worship. And I, th- yeah. I see God has developed that in you, and you are one of the wonderful things that God has done here at Family Church. Thank you. And I know that I need you. I run to the Father.